Hi, Arkville Weather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday morning, November the 2nd. Quite a chilly morning across the eastern part of the nation. Many areas in the mid Atlantic region drop below freezing for the first time this season. Widespread frost uh, up and down the I 95 corridor, suburban locations to the north and west of DC, Philadelphia, and New York City. And it'll be another chilly night overnight tonight, but temperatures moderate quite noticeably by the upcoming weekend, that first full weekend in November looks quite decent throughout much of the eastern part of the nation with probably high temperatures in the big cities up in the 60s sunshine expected on both days this of course by the way is the weekend in which we turn back the clocks an hour early Sunday morning I thought I'd talk a little bit more about El Nino and its potential impact on the upcoming winter season in this video discussion uh, first of all, we'll take a look here at a, a map that coolweather.com posts, uh, that's C-O-O-L-W-X.com. A quite impressive Arctic air outbreak for this early stages of the winter season. All of these blue circles here with white uh, outer rims uh, represent areas that are just about at daily record low temperatures for the morning. You can see it extends all the way from the mid-Atlantic region down to Florida. Apalachicola, for example, right now breaking their daily low temperature record at 41 degrees. Quite an impressive Arctic air outbreak. Yesterday morning there were places in Kansas, for example, Topeka, I believe dropped down to 18 degrees. That's the, uh, the coldest this early in the season in about a hundred years I think since 1925 so certainly nothing to sneeze at this Arctic air outbreak doesn't guarantee a cold uh, winter uh, or anything like that but it is quite impressive and now the brunt of it at least relative to normal is in the eastern states extending all the way from New England down to the southeastern Gulf region again a lot of these areas at or below record low temperatures this morning. Well, since the weather pattern is generally quiet across the nation, uh, albeit very cold in some parts of the U.S., like the east and the south, I thought we'd kind of focus in on El Nino and its potential impact on the upcoming winter season. We posted our winter outlook. You can go to arcfieldweather.com, uh, pull down the uh, menus at the upper right for seasonal outlooks to get to that winter outlook. El Nino was, of course, an important factor. Uh, many, many other factors as well, such as a negative QBO, and we talk about that in the uh, winter outlook. This is the latest sea surface temperature anomaly map from the Canadian Met Center. This is the west coast of South America right here. This particular line right here represents the zero degree latitude line, the equator right here, and you can clearly see warmer than normal sea surface temperatures right across the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. This is the El Nino we've been talking about for uh, many, many months now. The last three winters actually featured colder than normal temperatures in this uh, part of the Pacific Ocean. La Nina con conditions are very unusual to have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back winter seasons. Now, Notice that the uh, temperatures have extended all the way into the central part of the Pacific Ocean. These were warmer than normal temperatures just a month or two ago. It was basically uh, focused in on the uh, eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. The location of the El Nino is important as well, as well as the magnitude. And the magnitude here uh, is quite interesting. It looks like this will be a moderately strong El Nino as we go through the winter season. In fact, it looks like it will weaken uh, as we get into the second half of the winter season. And there are certainly some indications uh, that lead me to believe we could actually get back to neutral or even La Nina conditions in the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean later next spring or certainly by next summer. This does not look like it will be a super strong El Nino, uh, such as uh, 97, 98, 72, 73, 82, 83, and there was a recent one, 2015, 2016, that I would classify as a super El Nino. Several indications here suggest that this will not uh, reach that kind of a status, and that's important because in a moment I'll show some 
temperature anomaly maps from those winters that have moderate El Ninos, not super strong. They took out the super strong El Ninos, and certainly there's a clear signal of colder than normal conditions in the uh, eastern and southern part of the U.S. But again, we'll be monitoring this over the next several weeks. We, we clearly have an El Nino. I do not believe, however, that it will reach super El Nino status, such as the uh, one in 2015 or 16, and in fact, will weaken during uh, as we progress through the upcoming winter season. Well, even though the, those sea surface temperatures look quite impressive in the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean, suggesting maybe a strong El Nino, if you take a look at what's been going on in the atmosphere, uh, it, it, it doesn't give me the feel that we are headed for a super El Nino. And a super El Nino type of winter, you have a real activated southern branch of the jet stream, that subtropical jet. I do believe we'll have an active subtropical jet, but it uh, certainly does not give me the feel that we're headed for a super El Nino. This is the forecast map for the next 10 days of the total precipitation. We're using the Canadian model run from Zero Z last night. Take a look at right in the southern part of the nation. Not a heck of a lot going on for the next 10 days. Not exactly showing signs of a very active subtropical jet as you would expect with a developing very strong El Nino. So the atmosphere itself may be giving us some hints that this will only be a moderate El Nino and it may very well weaken during the uh, second half of the upcoming winter season. By the way, while we're here, take a look across the uh, west coast here. We are getting uh, some significant precipitation all the way down to the Sierra Nevadas. This is the total accumulation forecast map and a lot of uh, rainfall across coastal sections of the Pacific Northwest over the next 10 days. But again, not exactly a strong El Nino type of pattern here when you see very little rain over the next 10 days across the southern U.S. Now here's the next 10 day forecast map for total snowfall, again using the Zero Z Canadian model. Just want to point out a couple of interesting features here. First of all, here we go again with the Sierra Nevada Eastern California getting socked with snow over the next 10 days. You may recall last winter season they had historic amounts of snowfall across those high mountains in the eastern part of California, the Sierra Nevada mountains, and certainly look, looks like they'll get off to a, a quick start this winter season as well with significant snow over the next 10 days. Now, across Canada, Lots and lots of snow here over the next 10 days, extending all the way in the southwestern part of Canada. What's interesting is from a climatological point of view, Canada and Alaska as well really have their snowiest month. It's typically November. So this is not uh, atypical here. This is uh, actually quite typical that Canada and Alaska really pile up with the snow during the month of November. A little bit extending down. Uh, into the interior part of the north north uh, eastern U.S. and we'll focus in on that potential uh, scenario over the next several days. But again, mainly confined to Canada, which is normal for this time of the year, because again, most of the snow in Canada, or the snowiest month, typically is November, and uh, in much of Alaska as well. And the Sierra Nevada getting pounded over the next ten days with snowfall in those higher elevation locations. Well, in terms of the impact on the upcoming winter season with regard to temperatures, a moderate El, El Nino is quite different than a super strong El Nino. And I've taken a look at several moderate, <coughs> excuse me, moderate strength El Ninos over the, the past many decades. And here's a listing of those uh, selections here in December of that given El Nino winter season, I've taken out the super strong El Ninos. Again, 72, 73, 82, 83, uh, 97, 98, those were super strong El Ninos, as was 2015, 2016. If you remove those, certainly a clear signal of colder than normal conditions in a moderate strength El Nino type of winter. This is for the month of December. We're looking at surface level, 1,000 millibar level temperature anomalies for the month of December. This is how January looks. Quite a signal uh, uh, 
persistent signal of colder than normal conditions across the southern and eastern part of the nation, warmer than normal up across Canada. And if we go to February, take a look at that very, very significant signal here of colder than normal across the eastern in southern U.S. Again, this is for moderate strength El Nino winters. I removed those super strong El Ninos, and this was a factor that led me to believe uh, we will indeed have colder than normal conditions across the east and south during this upcoming uh, winter season, as uh, well as snowier than normal, much of that part of the nation. And again, you can go take a look at the uh, winter outlook at arcfieldweather.com. Take, take a uh, scroll down the uh, outlooks menu to the seasonal outlook. So again, just kind of a big picture look today at the upcoming winter season specifically with regard to the uh, unfolding El Nino in the, the tropical part of the Pacific Ocean. That's it for now. For ArcfieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Orient.